Hi, this is Aaron Collins, and you are listening to Paranormal Crossings. Thank you for tuning in today. Um, we'd like to uh, welcome you, and uh, hopefully everybody's having a good end of the year. It is almost Christmas, and happy Hanukkah to those who celebrate. Um, and just to kind of recap the year, um, there's been so much going on this year. Um, we have so much going on uh, starting at the beginning of this coming year 2019 um, we have the actually we have the Oregon Ghost Conference coming up uh, in March so I do want to talk a little bit about that this last year um, was great um, each year that we have the Oregon Ghost Conference in Seaside Oregon has been phenomenal we started in small Oregon City um, we outgrew that and uh, Rocky Smith who is the the founder and director of the Oregon Ghost Conference. Um, he is absolutely amazing. His vision for the Oregon Ghost Conference has uh, grown just amazingly, and we outgrew it so much that Seaside, Oregon, which is right on the coast, called him and said, we, we would love you for you to come out uh, to Seaside. And so we l took a look at the convention center out there, and that has been our home now for the last couple of years. Uh, this will be our third year out there, and uh, it has been. They have been more than welcoming for us out there. So, for those of you that haven't been to the Oregon Ghost Conference, now is the time. Um, it is March thir March 29th through March 31st, 2019, and it is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we're talking. It is a whole weekend full of uh, speakers, teachers, presenters. Um, there's vendors. We have action packed literally all three days. Um, I am also uh, one of the a part of the planning committee, so I'm also one of the lead investigators for the investigations that we do. So uh, people can can go online, purchase tickets, and can actually go on paranormal uh, investigations with um, either me, myself, or Rocky, who's also leading one of the investigations, or uh, another one or two investigators, and uh, actually investigate some phenomenal locations, one of them being the Bridge Tender, uh, which is rich in history in Seaside. Um, the Bridge Tender is a bar, and uh, above the bar, it used to be a brothel, um, and it has been very, very exciting as far as activity goes with uh, paranormal activity, that is. Um, we've gotten a lot of great stuff out of there, and the owners there have been phenomenal in letting us use that location, and as well as some other locations in Seaside. There's also ghost walks um, that they do and uh, around the city, some great locations. We actually have a bonfire out on the beach, um, if the weather allows it. Um, and people tell ghost stories, and uh, it's just, it's a great place for everyone to get together and just learn and just get together. It's also a great place for kids. It's family-oriented. Um, I, along with um, Rocky, also teach kids classes. Um, there was a big write-up this last time uh, in the local newspaper. Um, I actually was on Channel 12, which is local Fox uh, in Portland to help promote the Oregon Ghost Conference and talk about the kids' classes, which was great. Um, and so the kids can come out and do hands-on. We bring equipment so the kids can actually learn how to use the equipment. Um, we had a green screen. The kids can stand in front of a green screen with different backgrounds uh, in the back, which is a lot of fun. And honestly, the parents loved it as well, uh, including myself, of course, had to play with that. A uh, lot, lot of things to do. Uh, there's food, of course. Uh, and who doesn't want to go to the coast? The Pacific Northwest is beautiful. Um, the coast is wonderful. And uh, you'll have a great time. So again, it's March 29th through the 31st of 2019. And you can go to the uh, website, uh, OregonGoesConference.com, and you'll be able to see... Uh, We'll have a schedule up there, um, actually, the beginning of next year. Uh, if you're interested in being a speaker, um, then now is the time to put in an application. And uh, all you need to do is go to the OregonGhostConference.com website, put in an application. Um, they are due by 
uh, the 17th of this month. I know that's a little quick. Uh, we've been advertising on Facebook, um, and we will actually, as a committee, vote on the applications that we feel would be best. Um, and so, and we do this every year. We get a lot of great speakers that come in every year, people from all over. Uh, we've had people come from other countries. We've had people, uh, Canada, uh, we've had people come in from uh, all over, all over the U.S. as well. Uh, so it's great place, great fun. Uh, so if you're interested in being a speaker, please go to the OregonGhostConference.com. Uh, applications are due by December 17th. We vote on them uh, on December 22nd. There are no late applications accepted, so please get them in ASAP. Um, go to the OregonGhostConference.com. You can also find us on Facebook. And uh, again, it's it's just it's a lot of fun. The Oregon Ghost Conference. If you just want to come and have a good time, it's the 29th through the 31st of March this next year. So, so lots of good stuff, lots of fun. Um, as far as uh, Paranormal Crossings goes, um, we did start as Blog Talk Radio and had a great time doing Blog Talk. Um, and then we switched and made that leap to television, which uh, we did local television in Portland, Oregon, uh, metro area. Um, once we did that, um, we actually started going out to YouTube, which reached a broader audience. Um, that was great, um, and then ended up just doing specials. So from time to time, my wife, Christina, uh, who is my co-host, we, we do specials from time to time interviewing different people in the field, the paranormal field, um, different authors, international authors. Um, and so we still do that from time to time, but the opportunity came to start doing a podcast, which I've been wanting to get back to uh, doing uh, online radio. And so uh, we're going to make this our home and uh, still do television uh, from time to time. But this is where we want to be for a while. And, and this is where it's at. So um, hopefully you'll tune in every week and uh, follow us on here. And we will create a Facebook page that you can go to and, and uh, lots of great stuff. So so this year, we did an investigation back in January of uh, 2018 in Astoria, Oregon, and we did this with a, a, a group of fellow investigators uh, put together by my good friend Jeff Davis, who has been um, just a great friend, but he was, he's been on the Dead Files through the Travel Channel many times uh, as a historian. Um, and he's written countless books uh, on paranormal as well as um, historical type of books. And so he put it together a bunch of us. We all went to Astoria uh, to the Commodore Hotel. Uh, the plan was to investigate the Commodore, which we did. And last minute, we ended up going to a hotel called the Norblad. And we did an investigation there. The second we walked into the basement of this particular hotel, I realized that there is something, there was something not right. Um, I felt something very negative, uh, something evil um, when we walked into this basement, and uh, it was definitely demonic. Uh, now, two of the the women that are on my paranormal team, which is Northwest Paranormal Investigative Team, that I've had this team for twenty years now. Um, and, uh, they, ha they've actually broken off into another group, still part of our NW paranormal investigative team, but because one of them, June Lundgren, who is a, uh, renowned, uh, psychic medium, she's a international author. She's also what they call a demon seer. She has the ability to see demons. She's also able to, um, get rid of demons. Um, and, she and another member of our team, Wendy Stanton, she also um, is a psychic medium. They broke off from our team to do demonic removals only. And it's because June and I did a interview with Clyde Lewis on uh, his radio station uh, called Ground Zero, or his radio show. Um, Clyde's a good friend of ours. I've been on his show several times. And... 
once we did the interview, um, which was called Demon Seer, um, June got over 200 emails just that week and for people needing her assistance. And so at that point, she decided, you know, we can't do this through NW Paranormal Investigative Team, so why don't we break off and do our own team? Well, I am also an ordained minister. And so June asked me if I would accompany her occasionally um, to help with these demonic removals as an ordained minister to help comfort the family or those that uh, people that are involved that have these locations where these uh, uh, demonic attacks are, 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 are at. And so, of course, I agreed to help. Um, now, I'm not a demonologist. Let me put that out there. Um, that's not my, what, what I do. Um, I go as an ordained minister. Um, I, I console the family or the, the individuals involved in that location, and I, I assist in that way. Uh, I do blessings, you know, things like that. So I know the feeling when there's a demonic presence. And now once I walked down into that basement, I knew what it was. The problem was, and this is a disclaimer, so I want to tell you all that um, whenever doing any type of investigation, um, first of all, don't do it on your own. Um, always go with others that are more experienced or have experience. Um, I know a lot of people, you watch the shows on TV and you think, oh, that's easy, I can do that. And uh, it's not like that. Um, you have to understand, even the people on TV, they have experience. They, they you know, they've done this. They, they know how to prepare themselves. And I know how to prepare myself. I've been doing this for 20 years. But the problem was there was an individual who, who accompanied us who was younger and had never <laughs> been in an investigation before. And I was more worried about this individual than I was about myself, which was my bad, my fault. I should have prepared myself and protected myself, and I didn't. And I'll admit that. And... Because my worry was so much about him, I got attacked. And I have two spinal diseases. In fact, I'm looking at back surgery in the near future. Um, and that's what they do. They go for your weakest point in your body and attack you there. So um, I was attacked viciously in my spine. And the longer I was down there, the worse it was. And finally, after about an hour of being down there um, doing this investigation, um, now we went down there, let me back up. We went down there with no knowledge of this location. We had no idea of the history, um, and obviously had no idea that there was anything demonic. Um, so once I was attacked after about an hour, I, cu I couldn't handle it anymore. And I walked over to my wife and I explained to her what was going on and told her I needed to remove myself from the location and take care of this attack and get rid of it. I've been with June long enough. Um, I've learned the tools of how to get rid of this attack, of this demonic attack. And she wanted to go with me and I told her absolutely not. I didn't want it to jump from me to her. I wanted to protect her. And so I removed myself and did what I needed to do um, to get rid of this attack. So I was attacked at this location. It was the most brutal attack I have ever experienced. Uh, in all my years of investigating and especially in assisting with demonic removals. And so with that said, um, I ended up getting a phone call from uh, Jeff Davis, who said that Ghost Adventures was looking to do a miniseries in the Pacific Northwest um, and on the coast and especially at the Astoria area. And he wanted to know if um, he could have them contact me uh, based on what I experienced. And I agreed. And so I did speak with them. And long story short, uh, we agreed to be on an episode of um, Ghost Adventures. And so we were. We were on an episode of Ghost Adventures. Uh, and it's, uh, you can find that on YouTube or um, you can find it, uh, whatever your, your uh, television outlet is. Um, and it is the, the Norblad. So if you look up Ghost Adventures, Norblad, you'll find it. Um, and it was, it was quite an experience. Um, I will say, um, 
as far as Ghost Adventures goes, Zach Bagans and the rest of the crew, they were extremely wonderful. Uh, they were they were kind. They treated us with respect. And Zach Bagans was very, very professional. In fact, all of them were very professional. Uh, Zach, knowing the attack that I endured, did not want to interview me at the Norblad. And I found that very kind and looking out for my interest. And so he actually interviewed my wife and I at the Commodore, which was just a couple of blocks down the road from the Norblad. And the interview went great. He was wonderful. Um, and so that was my experience. That was our experience with uh, Ghost Adventures. Um, so we're going to have to take a few minutes for a short commercial break. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the Norblad and uh, our experience with Ghost Adventures. Stay tuned. Well, welcome back to the show. And uh, when, we, when we went to break, we were talking about the Norblad and Astoria Again, kudos and shout out to Ghost Adventures crew. They were all great, fantastic people, very professional, funny, um, behind the scenes. We had a great time. Um, if you get a chance to go to Astoria, Oregon, the Commodore Hotel, the Norblad, uh, great locations, great people, um, great places to stay. Um, we stayed at the Commodore. My wife and I did. We had a great time staying in that hotel. Lots of history. Astoria has great history and uh, great places to great place to visit. Uh, there's lots to do. Great shops and the architecture in Astoria is wonderful. Um, if you're looking for um, Victorian style homes, um, it it is just unbelievable. They have the Astoria Column. Uh, which you can actually, it's on top of the hill. You can climb up to the top and it overlooks, you can see part of the ocean. You can see all of the city. It's just absolutely beautiful there. It's a, a very desired location to visit. It's wonderful. Uh, and it's not that far from, it's about 20 minutes from Seaside. Um, and it's along the um, Highway 101 along the coast. So it's a great place to go. Um, so again, if you want to check out that episode, it's, the uh, uh, Norblad ghost adventures, Norblad. Um, again, it was a great, great experience for myself and my wife to be on that episode. Zach Bagans was very great. Um, it, it was just a great, great experience for us. So, and, uh, so moving along, um, other things that are going on, um, there's also, we have some investigations that um, we have lined up that we're going to be uh, presenting this next year. We're going to do something a little different with Paranormal Crossings on television. Um, my plan is to, and it's always been, to bridge the gap between talk show and investigative show. I don't want to do the same thing everybody else is doing, uh, which is why I wanted to start out doing a talk show as far as paranormal crossings. Um, and that's what I've done for the last four years. Uh, we've done Halloween specials. We've done it in front of live studio audience, audience, uh, where people could actually ask questions, which has been great for our panels. Um, and so, but this time we're going to do something a little bit different, uh, sometime this next year and bridge the gap between talk show and investigative show. So, uh, I'm not going to explain that all. You're just going to have to tune in, so be watching out for that. I'll be advertising that sometime this next year. Uh, it might be in the middle of the year, possibly um, the beginning of summer. Uh, lots of great guests, uh, as, well on, as well as on the podcast. Um, I have a, a slew of people that will definitely be interested in hearing um, that are going to be on the show, and uh, th that's exciting to me. I have a lot of uh, authors and investigators, uh, psychic mediums, uh, people living in haunted locations, some you may have seen on TV. Um, so we have a lot of exciting things coming up with Paranormal Crossings, uh, the podcast, and so which I like to call Into the Unknown, a leap into the unknown, because that's what we're doing. Uh, so also, if you're in the Midwest, in the Portland, Oregon area, I'd also invite you to come to uh, what... Again, Rocky Smith, he is the founder or of the Oregon Ghost Conference. He also has normal ghost tours. So if you go to www.nwghosttours.com, you can book a tour. He does haunted tours around Oregon City. He also has a shop 
in Oregon City, downtown Oregon City. It is amazing. And that's where all the tours start, is from that shop, downtown Oregon City. Oregon City used to be the capital of, of uh, Oregon. Now it's Salem. And it, Oregon City is rich in history. The buildings there are amazing and lots of haunted locations. Um, I've done a, um, a haunted tour there, an investigative tour there, when he first opened his shop at his oh, grand opening. So, so it is absolutely phenomenal. Um, lots of great stuff going on in Oregon, in the Portland area. Um, again, we'll, we're going to have lots of great guests on the podcast. I'm very excited about this new podcast. Um, lots of uh, great guests. Lots of I'm going to do some book reviews. Um, there's a book that came out that um, the first story is uh, by me that I had submitted to the author, Erica Gammon. She's from Ireland. Um, she had asked me if I'd submit a story, and it was my very first paranormal story from when I was 10 years old. You'll have to check that out. And uh, so that was exciting. I just got her book uh, that she sent me in the mail, which was awesome to see that. I didn't expect that to be the first story. Um, but uh, other books will be interviewing uh, uh, some other great authors as well. And again, I'll have June on as well. I was on her podcast and um, she's written countless books, um, and you'll be very interested in her books and listening to her. She's a wonderful person, and um, lots of great stuff coming on. So I hope you'll tune in every week and listen to our guests and listen to me ramble on about some great things, great investigations coming up, great investigators that I'll be talking to, and we're going to go into this new year with a bang. So hopefully you've had a great year this year. If not, you know what? We're going to put this year behind us, and we're going to go into the new year and go in with positive vibes and uh, positive thinking, and I wish you all a great holiday, a Merry Christmas, and a happy, happy new year for you all. To you and your family, from my family, we wish you the best. So thank you for tuning in to Paranormal Crossings Into the Unknown podcast, and we look forward to you tuning in again next time. So you have a wonderful new year. 